Now, this next question is a pretty meaty one, and I'm curious to see your answer on it. And uh, you kind of shared it with me. Could you describe in detail a particular incidence or scenario where you utilize your own philosophy on leadership? Yeah, um, I, and I think I mentioned it earlier when mm -hmm. you asked me if there was one word. And right. while there's not one word, I do firmly believe in being real and authentic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I found myself at a, you know, juncture in my career, and this was when um, I was in state government. Mm -hmm. And I actually served in state government as deputy commissioner and actually had uh, stepped away from that position as deputy commissioner and had accepted uh, service and opportunity to serve in a different state entirely. And I, you know, was making that pivot and that transition mm -hmm. right um, prior to the gubernatorial election that was, you know, pending and mm -hmm. uh, had actually many during that time say to me, why are you leaving? And, you know, your name is being lifted as, you know, the potential to serve in an even greater capacity with this next administration. Mm -hmm. um, Regardless, I still felt like it was, you know, the right thing for me to do to pursue this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I, you know, also shared, you know, that was also one of the most uh, humbling and uh, rewarding moments of my career was to have had, you know, the election has happened and the administration is, is incoming, mm -hmm. to have had that, you know, incoming administration reach out to me and say, you know, we know that your bags are packed and you're one foot in another state, <laughs> right. but, but could you like just cancel that lease and stick around, right? And so, you know, obviously for some personal reasons, you know, to stay near and dear to those sure. babies that mean the world to me and my children and my parents and, you know, my brothers, you know, selfishly, that was great, you know, it's, um, and I also felt like, you know, for the agency, that agency is one that you know, just by nature, because the work is heavy, um, it's 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 large. Um, this those seats or those heads of those seats don't mm -hmm. don't stay in there very long. It's it's a revolving door to begin with. So it it by nature experiences some degree of instability. And so you know, with the work that I had done in that other capacity. Um, that was effective and with the relationships that I had formed, I felt like it was also incredibly beneficial to the agency to provide that continuity and that stability and to not have to get through the learning curve to already know, you know, what needed to be addressed, um, that that was advantageous, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a win-win all the way around. Right. And, you know, again, th that department, um, the Department for Community-Based Services has some of this state's you know, greatest group of unsung heroes that you could mm -hmm. ever hope to meet. I think mm -hmm. these are individuals who largely go underappreciated, um, get a bad rap, you know, fight a lot of uh, misnomers about what the work entails, how the work has gone about, um, right. work countless hours and um, advocate tirelessly on behalf of children and families every day. It is truly oftentimes a thankless job. And so, you know, deep appreciation for for this for all of them um, and there are many actually you know many working across the aisles and the in the uh, ju legislative branch you know many across many sectors whether it's private child caring agencies whether it's in the judicial branch that are working on behalf of children and families and so incredibly rewarding work in terms of the mission mm -hmm. And, and why I bring up the authenticity piece is for me, what I found is despite the reward that I was receiving from, from being in that seat, I was also experiencing um, just an environment that was just not okay. okay. Um, I was experiencing an environment that um, was misogynistic. Mm -hmm. I was experiencing an environment that um, was discriminatory and that was harassing. And again, I, I believe that each one of us, you know, we are the captains of our ship mm -hmm. and, you know, we all have command over our lives and I had to make a choice. I, I had to make a choice um, whether to stay in that because also what I was experiencing was some philosophical misalignment with 
what I stand for and what was also very clearly present within that administration's agenda. And, and, and that is, you know, again, with the changing of the guard, so to speak, when a new administration comes in, that is their right, you mm -hmm. know, to lean into the, the platform that they ran on and the agenda that they ran on and the right. things that, that resonate with them and obviously those that elected them in office. And so I, I don't at all want to be dismissive of the democratic process no, no. that frames no, our, our country and our nation and our state, but some of that philosophical stance embedded in the goals and objectives of that agenda were very much misaligned with some of the very tenets that frame that discipline and, and how that p practice and policy um, are undertaken on mm -hmm. behalf of children and families. And so when there were just the fundamental difference that I had in, mm -hmm. in, in my belief set and um, again, the administrations coupled with the disparate treatment and you know what amounted in my opinion and to completely intolerable and inappropriate um, you know behavior in an environment is just not something that I could could continue to stay in. Mm -hmm. And so I, to be true to me, again, mm -hmm. that authenticity piece, I, I could not stay in a seat and then be complicit right. in, you know, things playing out that ran counter to my belief. And then I also had to stand up for myself in a way that for so many that find themselves enduring that, um, struggle to fr find the bravery and the courage to do so. Um, I think we all have seen, um, you know, that's uh, th that's not exactly applauded right. uh, when that happens. And you know, I know for myself, in not only making the conscious choice to to move on, um, to do what was best for me, I also chose to stand up and be honest about why I was moving on. I mm -hmm. I felt like it, it is important. Um, one, I think accountability is important for each of us. Uh, no one is excluded from that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, again, was very honest in my decision to leave and um, to call out what needed to be called out. And I will just say um, that was received with um, less than a warm reception. Yeah. Um, the, I, I will be honest, I, I will never forget um, the incredibly disrespectful way in which I was treated mm -hmm. um, in my exit, and which I feel was a, a very intentional um, way to make me feel further devalued and to make me feel intimidated and, and you know, just um, was not handled uh, in a very respectful manner. And, but at the same time, I didn't choose to let that let that get me down, mm -hmm. and and nor did I let that choose to, um, you know. I think we've heard others say, when they go low, we go high. Right. right. Um, I will always go high. Mm -hmm. I, um, but I also felt it was, you know, important for me to stand up for myself. And so, you know, I just knew that if I wasn't good to myself, I couldn't be good to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And in being good to me, it meant I had to be true to me. And so. Um, yeah, a, a difficult period, but as they say, um, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. And I, I will tell you, I think for me, not just the, again, personal sense of, mm -hmm. you know, within my spirit and my soul of, of knowing that that was the right decision. When I had others that reached out to me after I left to say, thank you, mm -hmm for standing up for yourself. You don't know what that did to me mm -hmm. to give me the strength to stand up for myself. And so apart from, you know, whatever courage and just strength that gave to others, just also the sheer appreciation of so many that came pouring in, thanking me for the service I had given 
in that role mm -hmm. um, for all that I had done on behalf of children's, children and families uh, in this state, you know, was, was just incredibly um, humbling. And, and I've, you know, I've got my own little keepsake box of all of those cards mm -hmm. and notes and um, yeah, gestures of, of thanks so, and also solidarity. So how long were you in that role? Uh, I was in that role for two and a half years. So it was, a, I mean, you were pretty invested. Oh, absolutely you invested. Know, it wasn't um, two months is what I'm getting yeah, at. Yeah, that's right. No, very invested. And, you know, again, had made the intentional decision after having served, you know, prior to that mm -hmm. for, you know, three years in, in the other role, um, you know, really had hoped to have some continuity mm -hmm. um, just in, in, that, in that seat and, and in that space, you know, to really be effective in, in making things better. Okay.